Hey guys, and welcome back to Chemistry 1032 instructional videos. I am your host, Dr. Russell Betts, and I'll be guiding you through section 3.7, electronegativity, a very important word, and molecular polarity. Let's go through some of these definitions. Electronegativity, the ability of an atom to attract the bonding electrons of a covalent bond to itself is known as electronegativity. Okay? Electronegativity is basically how good an atom is at attracting electrons to itself. In other words, how good are you at stealing electrons? Now we know from our studies of ionic bonding that metals give up their electron, their valence electrons, to nonmetals. Sodium gives its electron to chlorine, lithium to fluorine, or however you want to put them together. Metals lose electrons to nonmetals. So if metals are losing electrons and nonmetals are gaining electrons, that must mean that nonmetals are actually really good at stealing them. And metals are really good at being stolen from. Okay? So metals have a very low electronegativity compared to nonmetals that have a very high electronegativity. In fact, fluorine is the most electronegative atom. Fluorine's electronegativity is 4.0. It's a four-point scale. Fluorine is 4.0. Now, as you move closer to fluorine, electronegativities increase. So conversely, as you move away from fluorine, electronegativities decrease. All right? So as you go from left to right through a period, electronegativities go up. As you move from top to bottom through a group, they go down. So here's our friend fluorine right there. Notice as we go down the group, the numbers get lower. Notice as we go this way through a period, the numbers get lower. Okay, so fluorine is the best, most electronegative, most electronegative atom. I shouldn't say it's the best. It's the most electronegative. Everything else is less. Okay, so everyone is compared to fluorine. Fluorine is the best, most electronegative atom. Everybody else is less. So, here's some more definitions. When two identical atoms share electrons to form a covalent bond, the electrons are shared equally. Okay? It's an equal sharing. Inequal, uh, inequal sharing occurs when two different atoms are involved in the covalent bond, and those electrons are shared unequally. Okay? So an inequality occurs when two different atoms are involved in a covalent bond and then there will be an unequal sharing of electrons. So we have two things you have to learn here. Polar covalent bond and nonpolar covalent bond. Both are equally important. Now, a covalent bond, oops, I'm not sure what just happened, guys. Sorry about that. A covalent bond in which the electrons are not shared equally is called polar covalent. Uh, when electrons are shared more or less equally, that's called nonpolar covalent. Now let's discuss the word polar. Now, if you ever look at a globe, you'll see that the globe has a north pole and a south pole. Now we could have easily called those poles positive and negative, but we don't. We call them north and south. Okay? Being polar means you have poles, a north pole and a south pole. Magnets are polar. They have a north pole and a south pole. Um, look at a battery. Pick up a double A or triple A battery. It has a positive side and negative side. Batteries are polar. Okay? Now, in chemistry, we, have, we use this Greek letter delta. Now, I can't draw it as nice as a computer can. But that's the Greek letter delta. And it indicates an uneven sharing of electrons or a partial negative or a partial positive. So if I were to write delta negative or delta positive, what I'm saying is an atom has a slight negative or a small negative or a small positive, not a true cation, not a true anion, but a little bit positive and a little bit negative, okay? That's an important thing to notice, and we're going to get into that a little bit more in a minute. 
Now, we're also going to learn about these things called dipole moment arrows. Uh, these arrows are always pointing towards the more electronegative element, and they look like this. Okay? Where the delta negative is here, and the delta positive is back here. Notice, that part of the arrow kind of resembles a plus sign, right? So that's how I remember that the delta positive goes on that side. Okay? So we'll, we'll learn a little bit more about these as we go through it. Now, here are some numbers you want to write down. The electronegativity difference. That means we're going to do some subtracting here. Okay? The electronegativity difference. If the difference in electronegativity is zero, that bond is nonpolar covalent. Okay? As the difference becomes greater, 0 0.4, 0 0.4, those bonds are... Um, be on the, they're on the, shall we say, they're on the fence. They're actually nonpolar, in my opinion. So here's how I look at it. Here's how I do it. Between 0 and 0 0.4, you are nonpolar covalent. Let me make that a little prettier for you guys. Nonpolar covalent bond between, oops, <laughs> it's not my day, guys, not my day. I'm trying my best here. There we go. Uh, back here, sorry. There we go. Okay, so between 0 and 0 0.4 difference in electronegativity, nonpolar covalent. between 0 0.5 and, say, 1.8-ish, you are polar covalent. Okay? Now, if you're greater than 1.8, you're ionic. So let's be careful here. If your electronegativity difference is between 0 and 1.4, uh, 0 and 0.4, you're nonpolar covalent. If you're between 0.5 and 1.8, you're polar covalent. And if you're greater than 1.8, you're ionic. All right? So I think I have an example going forward here. Let's find one. Yeah, here we go. Here are some examples. Now I'm going to have to switch back to the electronegativity table, or I'm just going to open your textbook, and I'll find the table in your textbook. So I hope I can. See here. Let me open the book. Find the table in your textbook. Electronegativity tables, every book has them. Well, every chemistry book has them, I should say. Probably romance novels don't have them. They should, though. All right, so let's do some examples here. What if I had a bond between oxygen and hydrogen? Well, I look up in the, the electronegativity table, and oxygen is 3.5 in electronegativity, and hydrogen is 2.1. I mean, you can probably do this in your head, but grab out your calculator if you don't want to. 3.5 minus 2.1, and there you go, there you have it. 1.4, so that's polar covalent. Because it's between one, uh, 0 0.5 and 1.8, the oxygen-hydrogen bond is polar covalent. Pretty easy, right? What about oxygen and fluorine? Well, oxygen again is 3.5. Fluorine is 4.0 for a difference of 0 0.5. And again, polar covalent. If oxygen bonds to fluorine, you get an, a polar covalent bond because it's greater than 1.4. And sodium, let's find sodium. Sodium is 0 0.9. Notice I'm using the absolute values here. I'm not worried about negatives. Just use the absolute values. Negative 9 and chlorine is 3. That's going to be a difference of 2.1, and that is ionic. That's ionic because it's greater than 1.8. All right? So that's what that all means. Now let's do one more because we didn't do a nonpolar one. Let's do carbon and hydrogen just so we have a nonpolar example. 
Carbon is 2.5. Hydrogen is 2.1. That's a difference of 0 0.4. So that is nonpolar. Covalent. Okay? Now, for the ones that were polar, oxygen and hydrogen and oxygen and fluorine, let's draw the dipole moment arrow. We know that the dipole moment should go towards the more electronegative atom or the atom that will be delta negative. So this is going to be delta positive over here and delta negative over there. So the hydrogen is going to have a slight positive charge on it. The oxygen will have a slight negative charge on it. And then this one, we know the arrow points towards the more electronegative atom. So the oxygen should be delta positive here and delta negative here. Now, I wouldn't do that for this bond because this bond is nonpolar covalent. Oops, I kind of hid some of that data from you there. Oop, there we go. Move my face up there. Okay? And that's how it works. That's how the electronegativities work, and that's what they kind of tell us. They kind of give us information about uh, polarity. And knowing about polarity is going to be very useful when we start talking about um, how molecules interact with each other explains boiling points, explains melting points, explains protein foldings and all this kind of stuff. It's really, really important to know this stuff. So keep it in mind as we move forward. All right, here's one for you all to try. So pause the video, grab out your electronegativity table if you haven't got one. If you haven't, don't have a book or anything, let's look them up on the internet. They're, these tables are everywhere. All right, so pause the video and come on back. Hey guys, welcome back. And look, we've already done this one, so let's do it again real quick. That's going to be uh, carbon is 2.5, hydrogen is 2.1, difference of 0 0.4, nonpolar, covalent. Excuse me. That one you already did. Now, this one you didn't do yet. So it's going to be 3.0 minus 2.1 equals 0 0.9. So that's going to be polar covalent, right? Um, polar covalent bond. And if you want it to, we could put the dipole on there. I, the question didn't ask you to, but let's do it anyway. Arrow points towards the more or less negative. Delta positive, delta negative. And here, Mg, Mg is 1.2 and oxygen is 3.5 for a difference of 2.3. So that's going to be ionic. Double check my math there before I make a fool of myself. 2.3. Whoa, I did it right. It's an ionic bond. But you could have you could have guessed that, right? You could have guessed it was an ionic bond because a metal and non-metal. So you could have guessed, but the numbers also tell you. So there you go. That's how you figure out the uh, polar covalent, non-polar non covalent, or ionic. Now, we have to talk a little bit about molecular polarity. It's kind of a little abstracty, but it's not that bad really. Okay. Now, it is possible for the numbers to predict polarity. It's possible to predict, to calculate bonds and say, this molecule is polar. Unfortunately, that sometimes that can give you the wrong answer. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, let's imagine then we have U. Let's just draw U. And U are being pulled on either side by amazingly strong forces. So we have an amazingly strong force pulling you this way and an amazingly strong force pulling you the opposite direction, but with equal force. So the force on this side and the force on that side is equal. So you're not going to go anywhere, are you? You're going to stay right there. Why are you going to stay right there? Because the force pulling you to the right and the force pulling you to the left is equal and opposite. Okay? So you're not going to go anywhere at that point. So if one of your friends is pulling you to the left, the other one's pulling you to the right, no one's pulling you any harder than the other one, then you're not going to move. 
Keep that in mind when we start talking about molecules. Okay? Now, a polar molecule has an uneven distribution of electrons over the entire molecule. A nonpolar molecule has an even distribution of those electrons over the entire molecule. Let's take a look at something like... I'll read that on your own. Okay, here's some examples. We know, for example... Ah, goodness gracious. There we go. One more time. We know, for example, that uh, hydrogen will be delta, delta positive and oxygen will be delta negative. Notice how the polarity arrows are all pointing in the same direction. Okay? This hydrogen is pointing that way. This hydrogen is pointing that way. Or this dipole arrow, excuse me, is pointing that way. So both arrows, this arrow, oh my goodness, 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 come on. Okay, one more time. Notice how this arrow, this polarity arrow, is pointing that way, and this one is pointing into it. They're both pointing in the same direction. This is like both two of your friends are pushing you in the same direction. So you're definitely going to go that way. Here, this is saying that these electrons that are in this bond are being pulled towards the oxygen, and here they're being pulled towards the oxygen. So these arrows are what they call reinforcing each other. They're saying, they're both saying that the, all the electrons are going towards the oxygen. So the oxygen is going to be delta negative, no question. And each hydrogen will be delta positive. So water is a polar molecule because the dipole arrows, this arrow here and that arrow there, are pointing in the same direction. Okay? Now... Here's an example of a molecule that you would have predicted would be polar just by the numbers. But it's actually nonpolar. Carbon dioxide is nonpolar. Now, let's talk about that a little bit. Notice how the polarity arrow is pushing to the left. The other polarity arrow is pushing directly opposite that to the right. This oxygen and this oxygen are equal and their ability to pull electrons along the carbon. So the electrons are being pulled to the left, the electrons are being pulled to the right, the same magnitude. This means, this literally means, the electrons that are surrounding carbon don't actually move because they're being pulled to the left and to the right with equal magnitude. Just like your friends pulling you to the left, and your friend's pulling you to the right. You're not going to move. All right, let me give you another example. What if we had something like carbon tetrachloride? Chloride, 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 chloride. There we go. So there's carbon tetrachloride. Let me get my face out of the way. There's carbon tetrachloride. And now we draw, use polarity arrows. We're going to draw one down this way because chlorine is more or less negative. Oh, my goodness. It's, you're killing me, Smalls. All right. Carbon tetrachloride. Here we go. Carbon, chloride, 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 chloride. So the polarity arrow would go towards the chlorine, away towards the chlorine down there, and towards the chlorine over here. And towards the chlorine over there. Notice, the polarity arrows are all pointing in opposite directions. Okay? They're pointing in opposite directions. That means the electrons around carbon aren't actually going to move. Because they're, all the electrons are being pulled in equal, with equal magnitude in the opposite directions. Okay? Left, right up, down, non-polar, because the arrows didn't converge at one spot. Let's do one more quick example so that hopefully we can all be okay with this. Nitrogen. There we go. So here we know nitrogen is more polar than it did it again. I'm having a hard time with my system here, guys. I'm really sorry. 
One more time, and we're going to call it. We're going to call it a video after we get this one done. Because I'm, I'm frustrated, and I'm sure you are too. Nitrogen. There we go. Hydrogen here. Hydrogen here. Hydrogen here. We know nitrogen is more or less negative than hydrogen, so we know the arrows all point towards. Let me do a better job than that. It goes there. One up there. One over there, like that. Notice how all the polarity arrows, or the dipole moment arrows, are all pointing towards nitrogen. That means that they're all converging at the same spot, which means the nitrogen is going to be delta negative, and the hydrogens will all be delta positive. This means this molecule, NH3, is called ammonia, is polar, because all the dipole arrows are um, converging in the same location, or they're all pointing in the same location, unlike with CO2, where they're pointing in opposite directions, okay? Now, I want to be the first to say this. I know that this is confusing, and I get that you guys are probably a little bit overwhelmed by this. That's okay. We're going to work at it. We're going to learn it together. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask, okay? Just try. Just try, and we'll get it straightened out in class. All right? Now, Make sure you try to learn this, give it your best shot, and I'll see you guys in class. This is the end of chapter three. Chapter three was a bear. It's a big, long, tough chapter. But it's important that we go through it and we get it all straight because it's, we're going to build on this nice foundation. Okay? So now I want to wish you good luck and good chemistry.